As we pastors go through seminary training, at least in our church body, we spend an entire year of our seminary years, one out of the four years on campus, off campus, learning under the guidance of a wiser, more experienced pastor. And I remember one of the one of the pieces of advice my wiser, more experienced pastor, who was giving me guidance in ministry, um, piece of advice that he shared with me. He said that there was really only one thing that he would evaluate his young pastors on as, as he would have to fill out his evaluations at the end of the year and return it to the seminary to let them know what did he think of the prospects of this young man for ministry. And he said, he said, I really just pay attention to, does he do what he say he will do? Is he faithful to what he promises to do? If he says he's going to do this task, does he do it? If he says he's going to do it in that way, is he going to do it? Is, does he keep his word, basically? And it seems that even the Israelites and even God value the same thing. Keeping your word. In Joshua chapter 9, the Gibeonites come to Joshua and the Israelites. They trick them into making a treaty with them. They were part of the land of Canaan, and by God's own law, they were, the Israelites were supposed to annihilate them on their way into the Promised Land. The Gibeonites seemed to have discovered that little law. They didn't want to be annihilated, so they came to Joshua, and they tricked them into believing that they weren't from the land of Canaan, that they were from a faraway place, and Joshua and the Israelites, they made a treaty with them. They said, okay, we will not destroy you. We will protect you, and, and, you, can come and you can come and work for us. And, and that's, and that's what ended up happening. But shortly after they made the treaty, the discovery was made. It's like, oh, they are from the land of Canaan. We should have destroyed them. But instead, we made a treaty with them. And it seems that a good number of the Israelites, they were unhappy with the leadership for making this treaty. And they said, well, now we should destroy them because we know the truth. But the leadership of Israel said, no, because we gave them our word. This is what we said we would do. And we are, we are men of our word. We will keep our word. And they did. And they did not destroy them. And the Gibeonites, they ended up working in the, they ended up working in, in the church, basically, providing good service in the church for many generations after this. So, so God used, I mean, just another example of grace, which we talked about a couple of devotions ago. You know, God used their lies. God used... The, uh, the Israelites' failure to consult God to, uh, to serve his church well, which he always promises to do. But, but they, were, they were men of their word. Like, and they're not the only ones who took that seriously. God did too. Later on, King Saul, when Saul was king over Israel, he violated this treaty. He, uh, he went back on this word. And God took that seriously enough that he wanted Saul to know that, no, I take oaths very, very seriously. I take promises very, very seriously. And when Saul violated this with the Gibeonites, he sent a famine that affected all of Israel. God takes his word seriously, and he wants us to do the same as well. Now, as you look back in your life, I bet you can see the same thing that I can see in mine. It hasn't been perfect faithfulness to keeping our word maybe in small ways, maybe in big noticeable ways, maybe in ways that still sit on your heart, maybe in ways that inflicted a little pain or damage in somebody else's life. You didn't do what you said you would do. You weren't a person of your word. And of course was true in some ways some recorded in Bible and some not, for every Israelite, for every Israelite leader, for Joshua, for Moses. But that will never be true for God. God always keeps his word. When he says he's going to do something, he does it. And it happens no matter what it will cost him, no matter how much pain he has to inflict on himself or willingly endure at the hands of others as they whip him and pound nails into him and spit on him and accuse him 
all sorts of things they have no right accusing him of. If he promises that he will love you, if he says that he will pay the full cost of what it takes to forgive you, if he promises that he will prepare a place just for you, in the only place where there's no more death or crying or pain. He promises that one day he will wipe every last tear away. He promises that you will be reunited once again with your loved one who has died in faith. He's a God of his word. He will do as he says. Always. No matter what it is. But there's one thing we notice about our God. Everything he promises to do, every promise he makes, it is entirely focused on caring for you. Your God cares for you. That's what he will always do. Rest well tonight, my friends.